The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. In the eschatological landscape painted by the book of Revelation, the world teeters on the precipice of its darkest age, the Great Tribulation. Revelation 14, 6-13 unfolds against this backdrop of profound darkness, where humanity faces unparalleled darkness, despair and evil. The Tribulation is in its full force during this period, an era marked by the manifestation of God's judgments upon the earth, where God's wrath is being unleashed without limit, which are heralded by the sounding of seven trumpets by seven angels. Each trumpet blast unleashes calamities of epic proportions, altering the very fabric of nature and humanity. The earth, groaning under the weight of these plagues and events, will become almost unrecognizable. The seas turn to blood, the waters become bitter, and celestial bodies fall to the earth, and much, much more. Locusts from the abyss, with the power to torment like scorpions, swarm over the earth, their king, the angel of the abyss, Abaddon the destroyer, leading them in a terrifying display of chaos and destruction. Humanity is caught in the throes of these events their hearts failing them for fear of what has come upon the world. Amidst this turmoil, the Antichrist has risen to his power. His rule is marked by deception and tyranny, with the false prophet at his side, performing great signs to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. They establish a world order that demands allegiance, a system that embodies rebellion against the Creator. This is the moment of humanity's last and most fatal nosedive as the world hurtles toward the abyss. However, it is precisely at this juncture, the world's darkest hour, that God intervenes in a manner unprecedented in human history. Never before has God done what he does in the 14th chapter of the book of Revelation. Never before has God gone to such extraordinary lengths. In an extraordinary act of mercy and sovereignty, he dispatches three angels with messages of critical importance. Revelation 14, 6, 13 brings to us the proclamations from heaven made by three different angels. In this passage, John receives a vision of three angels flying in the sky, each carrying a different message. So, who are these angels and what message do they bring to earth? These angels are not just ordinary angels, but they are three special angels sent by God to deliver a crucial message to the people on earth. The first angel comes to proclaim the everlasting gospel, calling all people to fear and worship God. Revelation 14, 6, 7. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and springs of water. The wonderful thing is that this angel will fly around in the sky, close enough to the earth to be seen and heard by all of humanity. I don't know how God has this worked out, but the angel will be able to preach the everlasting gospel and communicate with every tongue. So. Language won't be a barrier for this angel. It is possible that this angel will be able to speak the native language of whatever country he's flying over at the time. We don't know the specifics, however. What we do know for sure is that this angel will be able to communicate with everyone. This angel proclaims the gospel of God to everyone on earth, regardless of tribe, race, and status. The first two words this angel proclaims are, Fear God. When is the last time you have heard a sermon instructing you to fear God? Yet the very first two words this angel proclaims are, Fear God. This is one of the biggest problems in our day today, for we are living in the end of days. We are living in the last days. And one of the biggest problems in our world is this issue right here. There is a lack of the fear of the Lord. Matthew 10, 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the souls, but rather fear him 
which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. There are people right now who are living like hell itself because they do not fear God. They are living in complete and utter rebellion, complete and utter intentional rebellion against God for one reason and one reason only, because they do not fear God. The fear of the Lord will keep you from sin, to know that one day God will judge me for my actions, to know and to remember that my actions right now, this very moment, are being recorded by an eternal, all-seeing God. An eternal, all-seeing God, who will one day judge me for every one of my actions. Fear God. The Bible says in Psalm 90:10. Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures, yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. Do you understand what the Bible is saying here? The normal human lifespan is 70 years. If you attend church once a week for every week, that is 3,658 church services. In 70 years, there are a total of 25,568 days. How many days do you have left? In 70 years, there are a total of 613,632 hours. How many hours do you have left? Take out the hours of sleeping. How many hours do you have left? Judgment is coming, and I personally would be completely terrified knowing that judgment is coming when I have lived my life like hell itself. Hebrews 10.31 It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. I personally would be completely terrified knowing that judgment is coming when I have lived my life for sin and for pleasure. Fear God. If people really believed that a day of judgment is coming, they would live a life that reflects it. Fear God. We are living in a world that no longer fears God. Why do you think this world is a world that calls good evil and evil good? Yet the Bible states in Proverbs 8.13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Yet the Bible, time and time again, implores us to fear God. It is no accident that when the world is in its darkest hour, its darkest state, when sin is at its highest point, the very first words this angel proclaims are, Fear God. The angel reminds the inhabitants of the earth of the coming judgment and instructs them to worship and fear the Lord. He alone is to be glorified and worshipped. He made it clear in Exodus 23 that we should not worship any other God of whatsoever form, for whatsoever reason, but Him. This message calls all people to recognize God as the creator of the universe and the one who deserves our worship and obedience. The first angel's message is not only a call to worship and to fear God, but also an invitation to receive the salvation that comes through faith in Jesus Christ. A call to fear the Lord is a call to obey Him, to shun sin, to walk in His will, to walk in righteousness, and to do everything that pleases Him. This angel proclaims loudly, for the hour of His judgment has come, and this message of judgment will be heard by many across the world. A great multitude will come to know Christ as Savior during this period. Because the judgment of God is so evident on the earth during this time of the Great Tribulation, it is no wonder why the crowd of those saved through the Great Tribulation can't be numbered. The second angel announces the fall of Babylon, which is a symbolic reference to the corrupt systems of the world. Babylon is God's name for the world system of the Antichrist, the entire economic and political organization by which he rules. These systems are known to oppose the will of God. Revelation 14, 8. And another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The announcement of Babylon's downfall in Revelation does not signify the end of the Great Tribulation, but is rather an announcement of the future destruction of Babylon in the 18th chapter of the book of Revelation. The various pronouncement of this chapter are not necessarily a record that an event has taken place, but that the event is impending. In other words, the event of the fall of Babylon is impending, and we will see its actual fall later in the book of Revelation. The term Babylon in scripture refers to the ungodly and sinful nature of the world, 
as much as anything else. The system of evil known as Babylon, which is promoted by the beast and false prophet, is destined for destruction. Revelation 14.8 indicates that its demise will result in double destruction, both in this present world and in the world to come. Finally, the third angel pronounces the wrath of God upon those who have rejected him and worshipped the beast. Revelation 14, 9, 11. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest, day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. The prophecy of the third angel followed immediately after the first, and the second angel prophesied. The prophecy of the third angel is that of a warning against the worship of the Antichrist. This message is a warning of the consequences of turning away from God and taking the mark of the beast. God's wrath is not something to be taken lightly. The mark of the beast is a symbol of allegiance to the Antichrist and the systems of the world that are opposed to God. Those who take the mark will face the wrath of God. They will drink of the wine of God's wrath. This is God's last warning to humanity. Here God is warning humanity. God is pleading with humanity. God is cautioning humanity not to take the mark. The warning from the third angel clearly reminds us that there is a connection between worshipping the beast and his image and receiving his mark on your forehead or on your hand. No one will casually or accidentally take the mark. God will clearly warn the inhabitants of the earth of the eternal consequences of receiving the mark. The connection between worshipping the beast and taking the mark will be clear enough for everyone to see and everyone to know. The people of earth will have the choice to receive the mark and it is important to note that during this period of time it will be the normal thing to do within society to receive the mark because remember in chapter 13 we are told that an individual will be unable to buy or sell without the mark. Revelation 13, 16 to 17. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Receiving the mark will appear to be the easy way, but it will actually be the hard way. For going along with the world and pledging allegiance to the Antichrist through his mark will mean permanently turning your back on God for all of eternity. Those who take the mark will experience the full wrath of God without limit. It is important to note that God will have repeatedly warned sinners time and time again regarding taking the mark and rejecting the gospel. God will time and time again give sinners the opportunity to repent. Whilst the world is at its worst and the Antichrist is at his height of power, God will send his two witnesses. He will send these three angels we have spoken about today and all of them will warn sinners and call them to repentance. If people persist in their sinful ways and even persist to reject the gospel message as they are literally seeing the book of Revelation unfolding before their own eyes, then they will have no one to blame for all of eternity except themselves. I believe that in people's lives, God also goes to extraordinary lengths. Time and time again over the course of people's lives, people hear of Christ. They are told of Christ and his goodness. They are told of Christ and his mercy. They are told of Christ and the salvation he offers time and time again. But many people reject the call of Christ. But the God of this Bible warns people. But people do not listen at times. This is God's very last warning to humanity. Reflecting on the profound scenario presented in Revelation 14, 6, 13, where three angels deliver God's final warning to humanity, I am deeply moved by the potential reactions of those witnessing these celestial messengers as these angels travel the skies, proclaiming messages of urgent significance 
I am compelled to contemplate the mindset of individuals who encounter this divine intervention yet choose to embrace the mark of the beast, thereby rejecting the gospel. Imagine the atmosphere of that moment, the world in chaos, under the rule of the Antichrist, and these three angels appear in the sky, a sight never before seen in human history. It's an image straight out of a prophetic vision, surreal yet incredibly tangible. What intrigues me most is the reaction of those who witness these angels. In the face of such miraculous events, what leads someone to still choose the path of the beast? Is it fear, desperation, or a deep-rooted rebellion against God? Or perhaps it's a testament to the power of deception wielded by the Antichrist and his prophet, so potent that even the sight of angels cannot sway some hearts. The appearance of these angels is not just a warning, it's a demonstration of God's mercy. Even in the darkest of times, God reaches out, offering salvation and a chance for repentance. It's a powerful reminder that no matter how far humanity strays, the opportunity for redemption remains until the very end. However, the choice to reject this final plea, even after witnessing such an awe-inspiring event, is a sobering thought. It highlights the depth of human free will and the tragic reality that some may choose eternal separation from God despite clear signs and warnings. This decision is not a casual or uninformed one. It's a deliberate stance against the Creator made in the full light of His power and mercy. In conclusion, these three angels represent God's ultimate act of communication and mercy in a world veering towards eternal damnation. Their messages are clear, urgent, and universal. Yet, the response of humanity, particularly those who witness yet turn away, remains a profound mystery, a testament to the complex nature of faith, free will, and the human heart in the face of divine truth. Also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish.